tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello, today we talk about dimensions. This tutorial is not very concise, but it gives you a hint how to deal with these things. In Encloth, the nucleus world of Maya, we have dimensions, and it is as if you would throw a blanket onto a sofa. The sofa is on the left side, the, the big one, and watch the motion, how the cloth, the blanket settles on that sofa or on that chair. And as opposed to that, you use the same material and let it fall down on a very tiny object, like uh, on a pen. In this scene, you see three arrangements. They're basically the same, they're just scaled up. And they behave totally differently in terms of speed of the simulation. The top one, the blue one, uh, is cloth, and the torus, the red one, is the cloth collider. So the cloth collides onto that torus. Although they behave differently, they in some respects behave the same. Let's have a look. The right one falls down, the left, uh, middle one falls down, and then the big one falls down. So the speed is different, but the result is quite similar, actually. In the next example, I show you the same scene, but a little bit more extreme. The left one is even bigger, and the right one is even smaller. So we see the difference even more drastic, I think. So let's start. The right one drops the cloth, then the middle one drops the cloth. And does the big one drop the cloth? Yes, it does. It takes a while, but then it's done. Now let me create a scene in order to show you what this is about. We create, a, well, let's create a torus. And the torus is the default polygon torus. You see the default settings right here. Polytorus radius is 1 and uh, the subdivision axis etc are standard. Now we create, uh, well for example, a sphere. And we move the sphere up and we do this in a very precise way by going to P sphere 1 and we just raise it by, well, one unit or let's raise it by two units. And uh, we make it slightly bigger, and that is ideally done in the polysphere node, uh, where we have the radius 1.5. So let's remember that. We moved it up by two units, and we raised the radius to 1.5, and we crank up the subdivision axis to 50 by 50. We could do it 100 by 100, etc. The more geometry you have here, the more faces you have, the more precise goes the simulation. Now we have the sphere selected, we go to FX, if you're not there anyway, go to N cloth, and here we create N cloth. The sphere will fall down and behave like cloth, the standard cloth. We didn't change anything about the cloth properties, which it's is easy to be done, but uh, this is not silk, this is not cotton, it's something in between. So now let's re, um, select the torus, and the torus is going to be a passive collider. So it's not a cloth object, but uh, the cloth object will feel that passive collider. Uh, let's have a look at the outliner. We have the polygon torus, we have the polygon sphere. The sphere is the cloth object. We have the nucleus, and we'll be back to the nucleus in just a few seconds. We have N cloth, that's the sphere, and we have the rigid, that's the torus. Now let's run the simulation. I think this is quite impressive. What we can do now is go to the nucleus. And the nucleus provides the whole gravity, the atmosphere, the thickness of the atmosphere, the wind, etc. And uh, in the nucleus node, this is the nucleus node, you have the scale attributes. And the scale attributes, normally they are closed, so open them. 
and they show you a sp space scale of one. So we're dealing with units of one. And here it is interesting to read the Autodesk documentation. Setting space scale. Setting the space scale of your nucleus system is important to ensure that gravity is appropriately applied to your nucleus objects during simulation. That means our cloth. The nucleus solver interprets centimeters as meters and therefore you may need to adjust the space scale of your object's Myers nucleus solver. Otherwise, the large sized cloth particle and hair objects in your scene may not behave as desired. For example, when space scale is 1, that's the default, that's what we've just seen, gravity treats a 100 centimeter wide end cloth like it is 100 meters wide. That's huge. That's a football field. To improve the behavior of your large sized end cloth objects, reduce the space scale value. If you're modeling such that one unit is equal to one centimeter, the space scale value should be set to 0.01. Okay, so it we're currently in, this is a centimeter, so the dimensions are a couple of centimeters, two or three. The interpretation of the end cloth and the nucleus solver, this is the nucleus, um, is that the, this is not one centimeter, but it's one meter. That means the torus is three meters or 2.5 meters in radius, radius, which is a very big one, which is like uh, the size of a car maybe. And the same applies to that sphere. So we have a huge uh, scale here. And uh, it behaves quite nicely, actually. So I would be quite happy to use this in, well, for a further simulation. But um, according to what we just read, we can set the space scale to 0 0.1. They suggested 0 0.01 because uh, they wanted us to go from meters to centimeters, we go to decimeters, so that's one tenth of a meter. So currently this is one, cent, uh, one decimeter, that means this is 10 centimeters and uh, we have a, a unit of like 30 centimeters, which is maybe the size of a printer, computer printer, uh, as seen from the top, a typical one. So th these are the dimensions we have now. And the red line, by the way, right mouse click cached playback and you always have to wait until the simulation is done and the red line is finished from the beginning to the end and now you can scrub through the whole system so this is what they suggest as a decimeter scale it goes much faster and uh, this is due to the atmosphere and the dimensions because now the distance is one tenth smaller than before, although it looks exactly the same, but this makes a big difference for the simulation. So here the cloth has uh, certain problems with the interpenetration of the torus, but basically it works all right and it's much, much faster. If we reduce the space scale to 0 0.01, which means we have real centimeters now, three centimeters, tiny objects, uh, we let the simulation recalculate and now things will get very fast and out of hand, I guess. Yeah, here you see that the dimensions are so small that we actually need more geometry, even more geometry for the sphere. So this gets out of hand. Now we have a new scene and we create the same thing with different uh, dimensions. Go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. In the middle are the settings and the settings for the working units. We set them from centimeters, one centimeter, will be now one meter. This grid is much bigger now. So we start with the same grid view, but uh, the grid is now, this is one meter. These, these are two meters. Um, same torus as before, standard torus and a sphere. And we do the same manipulations to the sphere. We put it up by two. We change the radius from 1.0 to 1.5. 
we raise the subdivision axis in both dimensions into to 50 and now we create n cloth from the sphere and a passive collider from the torus now Maya's recalculating the simulation and let's see what we have ultra slow so we need to extend the frame range from well let's go to 500 we don't really know what it does the whole simulation behaves much more rigid and unclothy than what we've seen before when we go back to so that's what i mean by inconsistent because the documentation which talks about space scale and the dimensions of the scene are this is slightly inconsistent when we raise this uh, from 1 to 10 the simulation will go even slower and uh, 0, 0.0 one transports it back to centimeters now let's rerun the simulation will go much faster anyway and this is quite similar to what we've seen at the very beginning it's a little bit different but um, i don't know where this rotation comes from for example which we, we didn't see that strong rotation of the end cloth before these are dimensions of meters now but we reduce them to centimeters with the space scale by the way the time scale gives you slow motion but that's a subject of another tutorial so let me show you something where I changed the nuclear scale from 10 to 0 0.01 so it's basically the same simulation as before but uh, rendered with a toon shader and with a rotating gear so the nuclear scale is set to 10 and we have a slow motion it reminds us a little bit of the sphere which did not implode now the scale is 1 and this gives us the most natural simulation now we set the scale to 0 0.1 It goes so fast that we don't see the cloth actually dropping it's just sitting there and even faster with 0 0.01 as a nuclear scale it's down there and it gets very nervous <laughs> as we can see so uh, it's not totally logical and always keep in mind that we have an atmosphere which plays here and actually a rotating gear means we need sound makes things much more interesting I used an old telephone for this sound the N world has not only N cloth it has N particles as well and hair N hair so here's an example of um, basically the same thing a plane or a disc falling onto a torus and here you see the scale in meters so we're currently in dimensions of meters that means the whole arrangement is about um, 2.5 meters wide and the particles sit on the cloth now we have one decimeter that's one tenth in dimensions more drastic the hopping of the particles is more drastic and the cloth falls down much faster and you can imagine when we reduce the scale even further to one centimeter so this is a tiny object now it will behave much faster and give us these artifacts which can be quite nice really but um, this is not a cloth simulation anymore and I don't know where the particles have gone you can render the scene and find quite amazing aspects the particles are sitting somewhere in the middle so to wrap this up we have the scale and we have the dimensions of our grid and both things sort of work together 
since I'm interested in exploiting certain scenes and I'm some, sometimes really amazed about what comes out of it, I use the particle part, which you've just seen, the particle and cloth part, in order to stop the simulation at a certain point and make some renderings of just the particles with a cloth or without the cloth. And here they are. By the way, I have a 12 part course about NURBS modeling on Udemy and Skillshare. It lends you a hand as the total beginner in Maya. You don't need to know anything about the interface, but then we move quite pretty fast onto the complex world of NURBS modeling. It's the only way to model smooth surfaces. The whole auto industry and the design industry relies on NURBS modeling. But this is not what we talked about today. And cloth is something different and works only with the polygons. Have a nice day. Bye bye.